as far as political socialization goes, um, the, for the majority of Americans, it mostly starts for people in their family as you are exposed to the opinions of your parents. All right? I would say that not as a whole, but the majority of you probably have the same political beliefs as that of your parents. Now, that is not a truism across the board for every single person. It is obvious that you can disagree with your parents, and to a large extent, teenagers disagreeing with their parents is pretty common. But as, as, as you need to be made aware of, though, you are heavily influenced by your parents and your family in general. Now, as you progress in life, you will find other influences to be heavy influencers in your life, such as school, media, your peers, the people you work with, new, new family members as you meet other people and potentially get married. And all of this contributes to your political socialization. Teachers, pardon the interruption. We are just testing the intercom system. They are here working on it. This is just a test. Okay. All right. Now, does your political socialization ever end? No. It's a lifelong process. That being said, however, are you likely to group yourself as you become an adult with people that are like-minded as you or people that disagree with you. You're more likely to, to group yourself with like-minded individuals. And so Americans are typically associate, associate themselves with, with, you know, their peers ultimately become people who agree with them. And so your political socialization is unlikely to change as you get older, as you're not necessarily being influenced by people who disagree with you or people who disagree with the beliefs that you already hold. So yes, it is a lifelong process, but it's unlikely to change. It's unlikely to change. And the older you get, the more unlikely you are to change. All right? It's not impossible, but it's unlikely. Does everybody understand that? So, the heaviest influence that you get comes from your very early childhood. Early childhood, okay? You know, you, this is where you get your ideas about race and gender and what political party is what. Um, it's the same way religion is learned. You, re, you learn your politics the same way, all right? Um, you, your ideas can change, but most of the time you have a difficult... Most humans have a difficult time letting go of an old idea. Old habits die hard. You ever heard that expression? You ever heard the expression, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks? These, both of these expressions apply to your political socialization. So what we are going to do in this today is we're going to look at the six most powerful agents of political socialization. You already know the first and most important and most powerful. America. What was that, Cooper? <laughs> she said America. That's Which America. America, without the A. What did you say, Cooper? America. Yeah, family. <laughs> family is a very powerful agent. Family is so powerful. Fam Families are so powerful because they have a near monopoly on a child's attention. In a normal, wholesome family, the child trusts their parents. Now, I'm talking young children, preschool age. Children trust their parents. Also, more and more and more in American society, children are given 
more of an opinion within the family setting. Think about your, your all's early childhoods. Did your parents let you pick where you wanted the family to go to dinner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I never got to pick that, y'all. Like It was like, hey, John, this is where we're going. If you don't behave, you're getting a hit. That was how it was for me, okay? Like, my dad told me to speak only when spoken to, especially in public. So I, was, I lived in fear. But I had fantastic parents. <laughs> fantastic. I wouldn't trade my parents for anything. They're still fantastic parents. So, um, but nowadays, it's like, yeah, children are allowed to make decisions for the family. Now, I know go, where to go for dinner is minute, but they, they also, you know, a lot of parents plan their vacations for their children. A lot of parents um, will organize their work schedules around, around their children and will, like, allow the children to kind of dictate how the family operates. So... You know, that's, you know, it's not kind of a new idea. I'm just saying that it's more common these days. Like, it didn't really matter what I thought or wanted as a child. Like, I was, my job was to do what my parents told me to do, okay? Um, so, and I'm sure many of you may have that, had to have that situation. But more and more, uh, parents are allowing their children's to make, children to make decisions about the matters of the family as, as kids. Um and there's nothing wrong with that. It's kind of an American idea. You know, egalitarianism, equality. It's what our country's known for. So it's just kind of extending into the family unit. Does that make sense? So family's very powerful, very powerful agent. Another powerful agent? School. Schools are extremely powerful agents of socialization. This is where young children learn about the greatness of great Americans and America, and you learn it from a very young age. You are taught to praise our country's political systems. In fact, many schools, I will say almost every school, they make you, well not make you, but they recite a motto and creed that all young children from the age of 4 to 18 say while making a gesture of love and honor and loyalty by putting their hand over their heart and face a symbolic image of, of our country and recite a pledge. And it's not something you do once in your lifetime. It's something that you do every day. Pledge of Allegiance sounds kind of bad when you put it like that, right? <laughs> but it's all part of the plan, guys. It's all part of the plan, you know. And even within school, it's, guys, I'm a social studies teacher. Like, I'm part of the problem here. Not necessarily the problem, but I'm part of the, si- I'm part of the system, okay? You are taught great moments in American history. You're taught that, okay? You know, you're taught about how we achieved victory over the British and, and won independence for ourselves and all men are created equal. You don't always get the whole story in American history, in your American history classes. Like, you know, George Washington, the greatest of all Americans, you very rarely hear his battle record. or hear about him falling off his horse and people making fun of him. Or you hear about, you know, Ameri- you know Americans overthrowing evil tyranny against the British and fighting against um, the, the forces of imperialism and empire, you don't really hear much about, you know, the Spanish-American War and when we took the Philippines and, you know, the Philippines fought a guerrilla war against us because they wanted to be free from our empire. Like, we were the, wor- we were the bad guys. We were the British. They were our colony. You don't hear much about that. So... But you do hear about, you know, hey, World War II, the greatest generation. You know, like my grandpa, like my papa, part of the greatest generation. You know, he's just a illiterate farm boy from Camp Creek. You know, he had a third grade education. All right? So um, no other country on earth, not since 1930s and 40s Germany, 
has an equivalent to the Pledge of Allegiance. No other country on earth has an equivalent to the Pledge of Allegiance, where they make young children, huh? As far as, I mean, do they? Maybe they do. Theirs is not really to their nation. Theirs is to their leader. Yeah. So, um, that being said, it's, it, it is important that you learn what you learn about your, your country. Um, and by the way, I found out yesterday at our, we had those meetings, you guys went home. Every student who takes civics, AP Gov, U.S. history, or AP U.S. history in the state of West Virginia has to take a test now. And that test is to, to, to see what your learning is about the government. It starts this year. You don't have to, like, you guys are going to do fine. I, you, I could load it up right now, and you guys would take it and pass. It's basically like a citizenship test, okay? We're not even really going to, we're not going to freak out about it because you're going to do well because you've been taught, okay? You're going to do well, all right? So don't, don't freak out. About it. You do have to take it to graduate. It has to be taken. That's it. Does everyone understand that? There is no such thing as fail or pass. You are graded, and the grades go to the superintendent. Not even to me. I mean, I'm going to give you credit for doing it. How about that? For trying and participating and trying your best and not just going boo, 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 boo. So we have to take that test, the AP Gov test, and our citizenship test? This will be the citizenship test. It will just be. Yeah. They just added the U.S. history part of it. So you guys already knew pretty much. You just have to take it. You don't have to. I meant of the United States. <laughs> we could only wish, right? No, a lot of people would be gone. I'd be out of a job. All right. So, schools, very powerful agent in political socialization. Even me, guys, like if I were to just sit up here and once a week, just once a week, spout off my political beliefs or turn the news on and give you my educated opinion on issues do you think that would affect you like i'm you know i'm respected you guys know me like you have you you guys think i'm smart whether you, whether i am or not you guys value my opinion and you're like you know mr moore thinks this way i respect him and i think he's smart maybe i should think like him does that make sense do you see how school can can affect you that's why I'm very careful not to ever be biased, okay? I, in fact, I think I want you to believe what you want. Like, learn on your own, figure out what you believe, and go for it, whatever it is, okay? So that's, that's what, you know, that is America in my, in my eyes. All right, so schools, very powerful. Another powerful and in becoming, more incre becoming increasingly powerful is mass media. Anymore, it's in the, not necessarily the news or the television, but it's the little flickering rectangle you carry in your pocket. Themes and images affect people's perceptions of the world. And for better or worse, people tend to believe the things that they see in the media, whether they be true or not. And people think this idea of fake news just started, you know, in the last six years. That is the furthest thing from the truth ever. Ever. Publishing false newspaper articles, and that, that is as old as the print, as the printing press. We did that when we started the country. Yeah. Yeah, Boston Massacre. Paul Revere made a, a you know, a, a, an etching that showed the evil British soldiers firing upon a helpless crowd of poor colonists. Is it Andrew Jackson that spread lies about Henry Clay? Absolutely, absolutely. William Hitt, William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer started the Spanish American War. Newspaper men. 
Like they just printed articles about the evil Spanish and the, the Catholic priests down there were like taking nuns as concubines and like raping children and none of that was going on but it was what was printed in American newspapers. Well, it worked. It worked. We went to war with Spain. So, yeah, the media is very powerful and can influence you in a lot of ways. So, and, you know, it's not always real. And, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily apply to just, just the, you know, the news. Like, if you turn on just at, like an just a typical channel on television, you're probably going to see some violence, like a lot of violence. TV violence is very prevalent. Is America really as violent as our shows and movies represent? Not really. You know, you can't hardly turn on a Netflix documentary without it being about a serial killer. Do, do those even exist anymore? Yeah. yeah. Do they? I think it's more like mass murderers now, right? Like the people that... Yeah. But like, yeah, we, there are some violent people, but as far as the, the media goes, America is nowhere near as violent as our, as our television depicts it to be. Okay? I don't feel... Like, I don't feel in danger of anything, really, whenever I'm walking in public, you know. So... Um, you know, accuracy and truth are often overlooked. Why would newspapers publish such sensational articles? To get people's attention and ultimately get people's money. Newspapers, TV news stations, these are businesses just like anything else. And the purpose of any business is to make money. And if I can print articles that get your attention and get you to subscribe and get you to watch, I get your money. And that's what I want. And that's how our system has always operated. Okay? So I'm not necessarily saying that media is bad. It's obviously not. But be weary and critical of the things that you see in there. All right? Check your facts. Check your facts. All right? Don't always immediately buy into the things that you hear just because it's on a news station that you always watch or a news station that typically aligns with your ideas. Don't always accept it as gospel regardless of what your news station is. Does everybody understand that? Because they're all liars. Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay? Whether they mean to do it or not, sometimes it's accidental lies. All right. What is it? I said my mom used to get on Facebook and she's like, look at this. <laughs> All right. Facebook says that those vaccines have birth defects. Well, it's true. <laughs> Peers. Peers. As I mentioned earlier, peers, not beers. Peers. Your peers, you get to choose. Not necessarily right now. Like, you're stuck in the seat that I gave you at the beginning of school, right? But once you as like, oh, I don't know, what, three months from now, when you're adults and nobody tells you what to do anymore, you get to choose the people that you associate with exclusively. You don't have to be at school at a certain place every day. You can do whatever you want. So you're not going to choose to be around people who disagree with you, most likely. And so you are going to choose to associate with people who are going to reinforce what's already in place. So the stuff that you got from your family, the stuff that you got from school, the stuff that you've gotten from social media have largely created the mold of who you're going to be. And then you're going to choose other people that are like-minded as you to reinforce what's already in place. You don't want to do that? I want to think. I want to think as well, yeah. <laughs> For as long as I can. If you just surround yourself with people who just reinforce 
Why do you think we do that? This is this is social. This is sociology, guys. It's easy. It's comfortable. We seek that. Our brains are wired to make things easier. Okay, that's the way we are. Okay, that is the human condition. We do not actively seek out discomfort or or difficult situations. We want things easy. Okay, so and that's natural. That's not, you know, that's natural. So you're, you're going to choose that, and those people are going to reinforce what's already in place, all right? Now, in addition to that, you are going to tend, you know, once you associate with these people, you're going to have a commitment with them. You're going to build trust with them. And so then when they start saying stuff to you, you're going to accept it. You are likely to believe that the things that your friends tell you are real, all right? So um, you know, people tend to trust what their friends tell them because you get to choose your own friends, all right? So um, plus, it's like Cooper said earlier, you know, about, about you know, why do we do this? Well, it's, it's conformity. Americans are conformists and are typically reluctant to speak out against the most prevailing opinions. All right? Because of fear of criticism, fear of, you know, bullying, f fear. All right? So mo for the most part, we just kind of go with, go with majority. So you're going to associate yourselves with that. All right? It is. And is that also, it's also the most difficult thing. Yeah, it's hard. Hence, you know, look at the social justice movement. People are having difficult, people don't want to talk about it. People don't want to talk about it. And so you saw people do things like kneel during the, the, the national anthem to bring attention to it, to force a conversation, to force conversation, because it's not pleasant to talk about. Make sense? That's the nature of our system, guys. Okay, so um, peers are peers are a big one. You guys know this video game? You guys ever, it's a video game. You guys ever seen this? Is that it's not Sonic. It's not Man, you guys don't know old computer games. It's Lemmings. I've never heard of that. You don't know Lemmings? I know Fortnite. You know Fortnite? <laughs> All right, Lemmings. You, all right, so you don't control the lemmings. All right, you control the environment in this game. And the goal is is to get the lemmings to go where you want them to go. And if the first lemming goes, they'll all go. They'll follow each other. That's what conformity means. If you can get one going in the right direction, they'll, everybody else will follow. That's what a lemming is. These are like actual real animals, I think. I don't know. They're like little tiny rodents. I think they're like rodents, not lemurs, lemmings, L-E-M-M-I-N-G-S, lemmings. Yeah, it's like a little rodent. Yeah, they're adorable. You should play lemmings on the Nintendo. I think it was actually, I played on a Tandy or a, Com a Commodore 64. Yeah, with the... With, the, with like the, the six inch wide floppy disk that you had to put in there and run and hit. Oh my God. You had to know how to use DOS. Did you know they commit mass suicide? Yeah. Oh my God. It, if so one lemming will walk, if one lemming walks over the edge of a cliff. They all say you better not mess up that much. That's what conformity is, guys. That's it. All right. All right. Holy cow, they're so small. Why is that? Why is that yeah. Because, um, you know, people are. Conformists, not willing to go speak out against the majority, and so you're just kind of meh, meh. Very good, Cooper. I see the resemblance. Other agents of political socialization, nowhere near as powerful as the ones we've mentioned, but still powerful, are our political institutions and leaders. People, you know, in times of great crisis, people look 
to our political leaders and our political parties for guidance. And if you don't believe me, I give you Exhibit A. When America was attacked on September 11th, 2001, we were confused and scared and angry and disturbed and needed guidance. Most Americans were confused as to who is even responsible for it and how, to, how do we deal with this? And then President Bush, whether you were Republican, Democrat, it didn't matter. He gave a speech. He identified the enemy. People listened to him. He said, hey, the enemy is Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces in Afghanistan, and we're going to go get them. And it brought people together. How did they know it was them? Like, where that thing happened? How the spy network. FBI. Yeah. CIA. They also took credit for it. Oh. Yeah. All right. It wasn't like they were doing it in secret. Yeah. yeah. So, in approval, like we talked about samples and polls, about approval ratings. In samples and polls, after this speech that President Bush gave, Nine out of ten Americans agreed with him. Nine out of ten. That's like impossible. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine, like, nine out of ten Americans agreeing with this guy? It would be tough. But nine out of ten agreed with President Bush and, and his plan of action. So, you know, not, you know, not everybody's going to be on the same page at all times, but in times of crisis... People look to our political institutions and leaders. You know, we faced a crisis at our capital just about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And we look for you know, our leaders to just kind of tell us it's going to be okay. Sometimes they do a good job, and sometimes they don't. Okay? So, um, but, the, but it is an instance where we do look to our leadership for leadership. Okay? All right? Another extreme, another powerful factor of, of socialization is church, religion of some sort. Religion has always played an important role in people's political socialization. Do most Americans say they believe in God? Yes. Most Americans believe, say they believe in God. So religion has always played. Do, and, and then it's, it, most Americans actually attend some sort of church service occasionally. Not every week, not every day, but occasionally. You know, your cheesters. You guys know cheesters, right? Church, church you go to church at Christmas and Easter, cheesters. Mm -hmm. Enough of that, that would be occasional church attendance. Or at least going for like, you know, somebody's baptism or wedding or funeral. That is occasional church attendance. Do you believe that, what do you think in a poll if Americans were asked, do most Americans believe that the answers to a lot of our problems can be found in church? Most Americans would say yes. That, you know, praying is an important aspect for for guiding America, and you know, in 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 relation to a, a lot of these other countries, you know, as you can see by this, America has a very high percentage of people. This is a poll this the, about how um, if if um, if you believe that religion plays an important role in the problems of your country, and fifty three percent said, yeah, religion can help, can help, whereas other you know. These are more also other developed nations. Now, by no means is America the highest. I just I cut it off here. There are other nations that are significantly higher, particularly like you know Muslim nations, because their their religion and their government's tied together. Like you like their sins are punishable by law there. Whereas like in America, if you know if you cheat on your spouse, there's you know you, you don't go to jail for that. It's just yeah. But in other 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 places where religion and government are linked, like 
your, you could, your sins are punishable by law, okay? So, um, but America is definitely, has a tradition of having religion as an important part of our society. And, you know, a lot of Americans have, are at least descendants of people who, who, whose church attendance was an extremely important aspect of their life. And we also have a very diverse group of people. You, know, like you have more choices for religion in America than other countries because we do have freedom of religion. You know, just look at all the Baptist churches. You don't like this Baptist church, you go to another one. You pick whatever, you just choose whatever you want. It's like Walmart of religion. 200,000 choices. You know, you know, am I wrong? Yeah, you know, especially in, you know, in the heavy, heavy Protestant influence in America because you can just pick whatever you want. And if you don't see one you like, can you just make one up? Can you make a religion up? Yeah, yeah. you just make it up. Go for it. So, um, now a lot of people might disagree with you, but that's neither here nor there. But we've also had these great awakenings in America, the first and second great awakenings. You guys know those? Remember those from your U.S. history classes where religious fervor swept through the United States? And that's all part of our history. Okay? So these are your six most powerful agents of socialization. There's obviously more, but these are the most influential, most powerful. So it's all about how people get their opinions. Oh, you wrap all these things up. How do people get their, opi their opinions? How do they get their beliefs? Where do people's values come from? And it's through your interaction, through your socialization, this, that's how your learning happens, okay? And like I said, it's a lifelong process. It includes a lot of different influences, you know, and, you know, no one's good, no two people are going to have the same experiences in their life. And it's okay to disagree with one another. Dissent and debate is also another thing that America was built upon. Compromise. Okay? So that will do that will be the conclusion of what I'm saying today.